Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're going to build a set of RGB LED PC fire fans exactly like what you just saw in the intro. I'll walk you through the surprisingly easy hookup and installation. Of course, they're able to do a lot more than just a single fire effect, with complete 24-bit color control and animation on every LED of every fan. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of this video for a demo of about a dozen more cool LED fan effects. I'll be using these GIM fans from Amazon, which average only about $9 per fan. In the case of the GIM fans, it was simple. The wires are grouped into a set of four leads and then a separate set of two. That second pair drives a fan motor with 12 volts and ground, leaving four wires for the LEDs. And they were a simple hookup. 5 volts, data, and ground. There's also a data out wire that cascades onto the next fan for a total of 4 wires per fan. Your total set of parts for this project then is a set of addressable RGB fans, a Heltec ESP32 module, soldering, wire, and some connectors. The data signal that we send to the fans can control about 1200 LEDs in total at 30 frames per second, as long as you route the data out from one fan onto the data in of the next fan. In other words, you simply daisy chain the data from one fan to the next. This in turn allows them to act like one big long strip. Then, code that I'll provide and use in this episode turns that long set of strips into a contiguous drawing canvas as well. In previous episodes on the channel, I've walked you through how to build and program just such a chip for this very purpose, but you can treat the LEDs as a blank canvas as you wish, drawing whatever colors and effects you need. Either way allows the PC to take its own state into consideration. For example, the color of the fans can be influenced by the load and temperature of the CPU. And of course, if you don't want to generate your own light show, you can buy a simple hardware controller from Amazon that will generate light shows including but not limited to those which are synced to the room music. Simply connect the controller's output to the signal input of your fan bank. Just make sure that the set you get is for the addressable LEDs, often listed as WS2812B style. I'll test a couple and I'll add a link to the video description below. But that's enough prelude, it's time to start building. Join me now and follow along as I build a set of PC Fire fans. And don't forget to stay tuned after the build for a demo of about a dozen more awesome effects. So our first order of business is to go through and figure out what wires do what on the harness. Here's what I came up with for my own. Next I'll set the depth gauge on my strippers to be a uniform 10 millimeters. That leaves just enough insulation to use them as little handles for spinning up the actual wire and braiding it up. Time for a little explanation on the fan wiring. Each fan has a data line, and it has a data input. It also has a data output. The data output from the first fan ties in to be the input for the second, and the output from it goes on to be the input of the third, and so on. They're simply daisy chained. First, I'll strip back the connections for ground, signal, and power. And other than the ESP32 itself, this is all we need. A wiring map and a single connector with three wires on it. Our first connection will be the signal wire. It's the third wire in the harness, also the first blank one we can identify. All we need to do is connect it to the incoming green wire. I'm pretty bad at forgetting to do this first, but uh, this time I remembered to put the heat shrink tubing on before I make the connection. 
This is where I make that important disclaimer that I am a programmer by trade, and not a hardware guy. I'm just doing what I remember Mr. Bright teaching me in ninth grade industrial arts. Now, if it looks like I'm using some ancient tools or outmoded techniques so that I don't actually know what I'm doing or I'm just doing it badly, all of these things are possible, so I'll leave it up to you to decide. All right, I've taken my Adderall and four cups of coffee, so it might be shaky, but I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. And these lead fumes ain't hurting. I'm going to be test driving my DeWalt 20 volt heat gun here to see how well it works because I got it for my birthday and I'm curious if it's faster than actually dragging out a corded unit. This is not a sponsored video and it's not a sponsored test. Let's find out how well this thing actually works though. Okay, that's from first pull on a cold tool, never been used yet today, and I believe that's pretty quick, actually. Well, let's continue propagating the data signal by taking the data outline from this fan and preparing to connect it on to the data inline of the next fan. All right, unfortunately, I'm missing one thing here, and I'll give you one guess what that is. Yep, the heat shrink tubing, but I'll figure it out right away. There we go. Take it back apart, put the tubing on, start over. I gotta think that's good, right? I mean, it looks good. I think it's good. What the heck more could you want from a connection like that? We repeat the steps by going from fan 2 to fan 3 with the data signal. So, just as we went from data out to data in from fan 1 to 2, now we take the data out from fan 2 and connect it to the data in of fan 3. And if you're wondering what happens to the data outline of fan 3, go ahead and move your desk to the front of the class. All I'm going to do actually is tape it up so that if I want to tie this into a different bank of fans, it actually serves in place of an ESP32 as a signal source. So basically it cascades from fan 3 to fan 4 and so on. You'll notice my setup here is tying all three power lines of the three fan LED sets to the single power output of the connector, which in turn goes to the Heltec module, or ESP32, which in turn goes to a power supply, which could be the PC itself. So you do have to use some discretion with the number of LEDs and LED fans that you hook up to it, but we're well within reasonable limits at this point. And just as we did on the power side, I'm going to tie all three LED grounds here together and tie them to the ground output of the ESP32. This is our completed harness before I tape it up to make it look nice and tidy. 
And finally, here's the ESP32 on a Helltech module running my code, which will generate a quick flame test. All we need to do is plug it in, and ideally, we'll get a result on the fans right away. So the display here tells me two things. It tells me how many milliwatts the LEDs are drawing, and it allows me to make sure that things are staying under a reasonable threshold. And if it does exceed that threshold, the code automatically throttles back the brightness, and it would drop below 255 in order to compensate if it ever got too high on the brightness side. Okay, it's time to tape up the harness, make it look pretty, take the rack of fans back over to the PC, and install them. Let's do that. This is a Leon Lee PCXL case, the big one, which means that the bottom fans are actually on a separate little chassis that comes out as a one-piece unit. So that's handy for me, and it also means to reinstall it, all I have to do is stick it under two tabs, pop in two tabs at the front, and two retaining screws. Okay, with the fans physically mounted, it's just a case of fishing the wiring. I'm going to run the fan connector up to 12 volts. All I did was connect it to a standard 12-pin connector, and I'm going to plug that into one of the headers on the motherboard. It'll run the fans full-time or whatever is commanded by the motherboard, but there is no PWM feedback on these fans. There are, however, lots of fans that have both PWM feedback and LEDs. It just happens that this cheap set does not. After the fan power is routed properly, it's now a case of routing the three wire sets from the fan LED connectors. It's somewhat more complicated now because they're interconnected where the data in goes to data out, but nothing rocket science can't solve. I'm going to drive the LEDs with this Helltech 32 module and the source code from one of our later episodes in the tutorial series. You'll notice that I get some action immediately when I plug in a cable, and that's because this PC is set to have the USB ports powered even when turned off. I'm going to change that so that they only come on when the PC turns on. And speaking of effects, stay tuned for a demo of about a dozen different effects that are sometimes as quick as two and three lines of code each. I hope you enjoyed the build, and if so, I'd ask that you share it with someone, anyone at all. There's a share button right in the toolbar below the video, meant just for that purpose. This is such a narrow channel that I'm largely dependent on word of mouth for anyone to find out about it. So please click on that share link, even if you've never tried before. It won't hurt you. It won't bite. Consider it your personal growth and good deed for the day. I know I'll appreciate it. And speaking of appreciation, I'm not selling anything and I don't have any Patreons. I'm just in this for the subs and likes. So if you did indeed enjoy the video, please do give it a like. YouTube seems to really value that engagement, and I truly appreciate those of you who do take the time to leave me a like on each episode. Thanks. I'll see you next time here in Dave's Garage. Here's a set of effects to show you just what else is possible in a few lines of code. The only limitation, as they say, is your ability to modulate dopamine well enough to get off your butt and actually order the parts for this. Wait, that's not what they say at all, but it's probably true. So in the meantime and in between time, here are dust blinking lights.
Now this little chair will be waiting for one of you. And a rocking chair for another who likes to rock. And a big armchair for two more to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.